Welcome back everybody. I hope you've all been doing well since my last video. I have something special to go over today. Fallen Empires. Exciting, huh? This is the set that saved Magic the Gathering by almost bankrupting the entire gaming business. Uh, industry, not just Wizards of the Coast, but everybody. This could have closed down all the game stores and boy it was a mess. That's not really what we're here to talk about today. We'll save that story for another day. Um, we're going to talk about some other features of Fallen Empires. Uh, comes in booster packs, eight cards per pack. That is six commons and two uncommons. There's no rares in Fallen Empires, but there are different quantities of commons and uncommons. I'll probably make a video about rarity sometime in the future because that's a that's a whole other topic too. There's so many things we can talk about. Fallen Empires had Fallen Empires cards in it. And that included a lot of cards that had multiple artworks. Let's see if I get them fanned out here. There we go. So these are all initiates of the Ebon Hand. It happens to be a card that I collect. And uh, as you can see, there's three different artworks. These are all from Fallen Empires. Now, Fallen Empires wasn't the very first set to do this. That would be, I mean, unless you count basic lands in you know, limited edition alpha beta, then the first set to have multiple artworks would be Antiquities, which had the Urza lands and the Strip Mines. But uh, that was just sort of a small taste of this multiple artwork thing. Fallen Empires went crazy with it. So pretty much every card on the common sheet has either three or four different artworks. Now, this one has three. So these are just, you know, Fallen Empires cards. But that's not really what we're here to talk about today either. Today I wanted to show you some other Fallen Empires cards. Let's see. Whoa, check that out. So, maybe you've seen these before? Maybe not. If you have, I'm, I'm probably still going to say some new things that you might not have heard before, so stay tuned. But if you haven't seen them, then let's go over what they are. These are commonly known as Wyvernbacks. Now that's not really a super accurate name. They're actually magic fronts. So here's why. These did not come inside of these. Yeah, they look like Fallen Empires cards, but they didn't come from Fallen Empires booster packs. They're not magic cards. They just look like magic cards. They're actually wyvern cards. Wyvern cards. I tried to look up the pronunciation before I started this video. I checked the uh, the DD Monsters manual up there on the shelf, second edition and third edition, uh, not 3.5, actual third edition. And uh, it didn't have pronunciation guide. I I think they should consider adding that. So I checked some other places, and apparently the correct pronunciation of this word is wyvern. I might flip back and forth the way I say it. A lot of people pronounce it different ways, so feel free to pronounce it how you like, but apparently the correct way is wyvern. So, uh, you know, back to on topic here. So, so these are wyvern cards. And they came inside Wyvern sealed product. So the mistake here on these, because, you know, obviously this isn't correct. This is a misprint. So what is the misprint? The misprint is that it has magic fronts. That's actually not the only misprint here, but it's the main misprint that people care about. So this mismatched feature, which one is wrong? This side is the wrong side. That's the error. These are Wyvern cards. These are magic-fronted Wyvern cards.
However, like I said, practically everyone calls them Wyvernbacks. So I'm probably going to stick with that name. All right, so how do you get them? Well, um, you probably buy them already opened. But uh, for where did they come from? I said they came from Wyvern Sealed Product. There's several different Wyvern Sealed Products. These came inside. Um, what you'll commonly hear is that they came inside of Wyvern starter decks. In particular, if I can uh, get it in the light here, we have a Premier Limited Edition Wyvern starter decks. So uh, that's what this is. It's important that it says Premier because the regular limited edition, that's a different thing. Premier is like, I guess it's like the first print run of limited edition. So uh, in the US, from everything I've been told, those Wyvern back cards were found in the starter decks. Now, I don't have any videos of that. As far as I know, there aren't any videos of openings that, that prove this happened. These cards were opened back in 94 and people went crazy opening them up. And maybe they're all opened now, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's not possible to make a video that shows an opening. Or maybe it is. There's still quite a bit of sealed Wyvern product out there. But like I said, it's important that you get the premier one. That's the only set that these could come in. Over in Europe, in the Netherlands, I've actually heard of someone over there that opened quite a few of them from the Premier Limited Edition Booster Packs. That's not the starter decks. Still, we don't have any video evidence or anything like that, so feel free to give it a shot. You're, you're not very likely to succeed, so you know don't get your hopes up. Uh, I wouldn't pay a lot of money for this. Uh, it's, it's risky. You're probably not going to get anything. That's the way misprints work. Most of the time, you open sealed product, you don't get a misprint. Misprints are rare. That's kind of what makes them desirable. But if you're lucky, maybe you'll get something, and I hope you film it. So, um, what else could we do here? Let's uh, let's let's read this pack. So, um, Wyvern Premier Limited Edition. I'm not going to read the whole thing here, but. 1994 U.S. Games Systems. That's that's important. So that's who made this game. This is not a Wizards of the Coast product. Now, keep in mind that Wizards of the Coast does not print their own cards. They, they don't actually print magic cards. They design magic cards, and then they hire a print facility to print them. So this product right here was printed in Belgium by Cardamundi. It says right here. That is the same company that printed Magic Cards from the beginning until at least 96 or so. So, um, you know, Magic came to market. It was this great collectible card game and kind of took the world by storm and a bunch of other companies said, hey, I can do that. And they tried to jump on the bandwagon. This is one of those companies. And... They, uh, I guess they were off to a pretty good start if they were using the same printing company as Wizards of the Coast because Cardamundi is a pretty good printing company. You know, high quality stuff. They knew what they were doing at least. Um, so yeah, these, these were made in the same print facility in 1994 and Fallen Empire's cards were also made in 1994. They were released in, in the fall. Um, October, November, right around there somewhere. And so this would be, you know, roughly the same time frame. So, um, I guess uh, at this point, let's, let's cut to a video that I filmed at the first Misprint Con. So Misprint Con is this uh, great event where misprint collectors from all over the world get together and share their, their things 
and uh, we, we pretty much just have a great time. It's, it's a convention themed around misprints. So at the very first misprint con, uh, I was invited to go there and happily did so. I had a great time. Um, on, on my way there, I was considering, you know, starting this YouTube channel. I had, I was pretty sure I was going to do it and I hadn't actually, you know, filmed anything yet. And I thought that being there at Misprint Con would be a good opportunity to film stuff that I didn't necessarily have in my own uh, collection. And then I could share those things with all of you. And uh, something that I did know about on the way there is that a fellow collector had uh, supplied enough of these starter decks for everyone at the convention to open one. Heck yeah, free, free loot. Um, let me pop in a picture real quick of uh, this this person's collection of sealed wyvern product. All right, there you go. Pretty big pile. So yeah, um, he sent uh, enough starter decks for all of us to open one, and the idea is that we were going to open them, and uh, if we were really crazy lucky, we might get some Wyvern back cards. And uh, if we weren't, hey, we could we could still play Wyvern, right? Like, no one really knew how, but the, there's instructions inside, so, you know, maybe we could figure it out. So we were going to have a, a sealed deck Wyvern tournament there at Misprint Con, and, uh, you know, open a bunch of packs and, and then have fun. So I decided, you know, knowing that I was going to open this at the event, I decided that I should film it and put it on this channel. And uh, today's the day. So yeah, I filmed this way back when. This was the very first video that I ever filmed intending to put it on this channel. It's, it's about time that I show it to you guys. So here we go. Here we go. I'll get a video. Sorry, Shiloh. Just let us all down. Just let you know that. You get it? No. You get it? Brian is going to be... So you're totally going to be buried in fireballs. No. No. All right. I figure if anybody had opened anything worth the crap, yeah, we'd be we, we we'd open open a hollering. An unholy racket. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yep, that's yeah. a wyvern card. Yeah. Yeah. Those are wyvern cards. Those are wyvern cards. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't look good. I think this is going to your eyes. I mean, it looks like red. Yeah, so. I was just saying, I said. Hello, and this is Miss Brink Booster. <laughs> 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 uh, it's a crazy name. <laughs> I should have borrowed some of his blue gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine getting uh, one that's magic on the back and yeah. wyvern on the front. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be. They look like they're wyverns so far. So far it's nothing. But this is a really fun man. Turn the table. Looks like a shame. Oh, look at that. This is a table full of guys. Oh, yeah. This thing was supposed to start yesterday morning. We got started Friday in front of that. We just, yeah, Friday morning. I don't actually see any issues. This is a firewall. Well, we didn't get any magic cards here, but now we're going to play a sealed deck tournament of Wyvern. Oh, wow. And these are valuable because they're open by professional. All right. Okay, there it was. 
So yeah, we all had a great time. Un unfortunately, we didn't get anything. There was a, a fun incident where someone actually borrowed... Um, I, think, I think it was just one of these. Someone borrowed one of these cards uh, and actually you know, pranked the room pretending that he had pulled one. And uh, that was that was amusing for five minutes or so. It was it was a pretty good time. Uh, I won't name names, but uh, you know you know who you are. Um, and then of course the card was returned to me. So uh, that was fun. That was fun. So yeah, unfortunately it did not contain any wyvern uh, wyvern backed cards. It does contain a lot of uh, wyvern cards because that's of course what it is. And there was even a fireball in here, which I thought was kind of cool. I collect fireballs. It's not a magic fireball. It's a wyvern fireball. But still, I, you know, I'll throw it in my collection. Why not? So, uh, yeah. I guess you saw them in the video already. But this is this is the very deck that I opened in that video. And uh, there's the instructions. I think someone did get one of the ultra rare cards at the event. It, it wasn't me, but I, I do remember seeing it there. I didn't know much about it at the time, but it's a, definitely a different looking card. Uh, sticks out. So um, let's see here. Let's let's compare some of these Quivern cards here. Here we go. Let's look at a, a Dragon Slayer. So is a wyvern card the same size as a magic card let's let's check that out seems to be the corner cut is well let me let me start that over again here let's let's try it with a regular magic card huh Okay, same result. So yeah, they seem to match. Corner cut, pretty much the same there also. I wonder if uh, if US Games, is that who it was? US Games Systems, I wonder if they specifically requested to match Wizards of the Coast, you know, product when they, when they placed their order with Cardamundi. Because it's... It's about that size. But then again, it's it's kind of a standard size. So, you know, there's always that. All right, so they, they do match in size. Let's, uh, let's keep comparing them here. Like, how similar are these? So, um, yeah, as, as you can imagine, what happened is that uh, these were both being made in the same facility around the same time, and these backs... Um, were accidentally printed with these fronts. Hey, mistakes happen. Usually the backs are printed first, but uh, maybe in this in instance they weren't. I'm, I'm not quite sure how the error happened, but uh, they definitely loaded the wrong thing into the machine. So, um, it got loaded into the machine and got printed with the wrong side on it and got packaged into the packs and sent out. Let's actually take a moment and uh, and listen to this uh, clip from someone who was there when that happened. How's, how would that be? Wouldn't that be cool? Imagine if you could hear from someone that was there. Here we go. So then they were supposed to destroy, you know, they had a big, a big grinder. And any time there was a misprint or a problem with the sheets or something, they were to feed them in the grinder. Cardamundi had gone through great security requirements, some of which I required, some of which Peter expressed a concern, and some of which Luke Mertens, who ran it, it was, it was just, we were a, a big revenue stream for them almost overnight. And they were making tons of money printing magic. It was like printing money. And so, I mean, they had pat downs on their staff. They had, I mean, real tight security, and st still, little bits of stuff got out. And anytime you had a fluke like that, I mean, the prices on them just, they were asked, I, what was it, uh, Wyvern or something, they, they printed magic on the front of a card and Wyvern on the, 
the, uh, the back. Yeah, it was, it was different, Wyver uh, different collectible w game. Wyvern was another trading card game, that, yeah. uh, and um, I think U.S. Games published yeah. it. And uh, they had Fallen Empires on the other side. Right. Magic Fallen yeah. Empires. They, they it misprinted yeah, those, it. They were cards. all to be destroyed. No, no, you found them out on the market. Mm -hmm. Somebody had gotten some, mm -hmm. and people were paying big bucks for them because they were rare. Okay, continuing on with this comparison here. So let's let's get out this uh, handy tool here, and we will look at thickness. So next question is, what kind of cardstock are are those printed on? Are they on Magic card cardstock, or are they on Wyvern card cardstock? Is it the same cardstock? Let's find out. So, there we go, that's the, the regular magic card. We are between 31 and 32 on the dial here, which is, um, was it 0 0.01 times 10 millimeters? Anyway, between 31 and 32 is where we're at. That's for the, the regular magic card. Now we will try the Wyvern backed magic card, uh, magic front, whatever. We are again between 31 and 32. Seems to be the same thing. Now we will try a Wyvern card, full full-blooded wyvern card here. All right, now we are between 32 and 33, a little closer to 32. So so it seems just a hair thicker. Like, you know, maybe that's some some kind of variance in the card stock. But uh, they're they're similar. Very similar. Now, Never been test cards, right? Especially not anything valuable or old. Been testing cards, it uh, kind of stretches the fibers of the card. It, it actually does damage the card. So yeah, you're not supposed to do that. Supposedly they'll bounce back. You know, this is just a Wyvern card. It's not really worth much. If Wyvern had been a successful game and uh, taken off, then these misprints would probably be in twice as much demand and they'd be way more valuable. Uh, right now, they're already pretty valuable. Um, easily over $100. Um, I doubt that they're worth $300. I, I don't really follow valo values very closely. Um, I've had these for a while. Um, depending on the card name, like, I'm fond of this particular card, but it's not a super desirable card. Like, the big name cards are going to be Hem de Turok, um, Goblin Grenade, or High Tide. Those are the big ones. Uh, and they might be worth, heck, a thousand dollars, you know, something like that. At least for the Hem de Turok, it's heck of a card. Um... So, you know, big price difference depending on, uh, you know, playability, desirability. So, um, that kind of looks at the thickness. Let's, let's take a close look at the, the thin edge of the card. Okay, here we are. So, um, I have these labeled. These are, these are the thin edges of the card. We have Fallen Empires on top, right here. We have the Wyvern back card here in the middle. And we have the regular Wyvern card here at the bottom. So this is a uh, 4800 DPI scan of the thin edge of the card. And uh, you can see that they're not quite identical here. So, um, which one does that middle card look more like? Does it look like the the Fallen Empires card on the top, or does it look like the Wyvern card on the bottom? I think it's pretty obvious. 
Um, so you've probably heard about the blue core, the, the blue inside the cards, blue layer. Um, you can see it here. There's this thin blue line like right down the middle. And it's also present here on this one. And this bottom card here, the Wyvern card, it has a black core instead of blue. It is different. Yeah, the blue comes out pretty good right here. And that's black again. So the, the Wyvern cards, uh, the Wyvern backs, are apparently on Magic cardstock instead of on Wyvern cardstock, which is pretty weird considering they came in a Wyvern sealed product. So, uh, what does that mean? Hmm. Maybe the fronts were printed first on those cards? I mean, that, that would about have to be it, right? So the fronts were printed onto Magic cardstock, as you would expect a Magic card to be. And then for some reason, the, the backs weren't printed and they were set aside somewhere, lost in the shuffle. And then that palette or stack was apparently loaded into the printing press when it was time to make the web, uh, Wyvern cards. And uh, after printing, of course, they were packaged and shipped out. Now, uh, as you heard in the, in the audio clip there, the factory did catch these and apparently destroy a lot of them. But uh, I guess they didn't catch all of them. So, these Wyvern back cards, they only exist for the commons. They, uh, they don't exist for any of the uncommons. So, a full set of these would be 121 commons with Wyvern backs and Fallen Empire's fronts. That would be one full set. And I don't think there's any duplicates on the sheet. There's, there's duplicate card names, but they have different artwork. So, there's no actual, like, duplication on that sheet. So a full set you'll have 121 cards if you're crazy enough to try to do that because that's that's quite a feat to try to accomplish. Um, it's pretty difficult to find some of these. Um, let's see. Uh, mine here. So I was able to find uh, this one pretty quick and this one. I found those like right away and then this one took me like three years to find so not an easy task if you're looking for one specific card I saw a whole bunch of other cards that weren't the one I was looking for but uh, you know not that one There shouldn't be a situation where some are more rare than the other ones because they're printed on full sheets. They should all be equally rare. But uh, yeah, just luck of the draw, you know, sometimes it's hard to find what you're looking for. Now uh, this isn't the only time that a different card game has been printed on the back of a uh, another card game, we'll say. so. Uh, Here's another magic card, and on the other side of it is Harry Potter, a pretty popular uh, franchise. So this is from a uh, pre-constructed deck. Um, it was red and green, I think, and this is a Scourge card, if I recall correctly. I think I recognize that symbol there. And uh, here's another one. This is an interesting one. So this one has square corners. That's pretty cool. But uh, maybe you guys have heard of this. Blastoise. This is actually a test print, uh, not a mistake. So this, this was not an error. This was intentionally tested on a Magic the Gathering foil sheet. Now, uh, I'll have to make a whole another video about this because there's a lot to go into. But there's like three of these in the world that we know of. 
Um, yeah, more on that later. So for now, ooh, look, eye candy. And, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, I, I think that's it for this video. Um, hope you were entertained and maybe learned a little something. Hopefully there's some info there that's, that's perhaps not spread around as much. And uh, that even if you knew something about this topic, maybe you still learned something new. That would be awesome. Catch you next time.